Okay, I didn't do anything hardly at all last week. I had to, I have work to do. I started to paint uh, the two amas, the holes of them. Uh, I'm trying to do them inside because of the humidity. It's very hot but very humid, so um, we dry them outside. Uh, give them two coats of epoxy uh, and three coats of enamel. That's what they're getting on the whole bottom. And the, bo the other side will be blue. We'll do that later. So you're painting these and you're waiting for paint to dry, as the phrase uh, goes. There's other jobs you can do. Now, remember we have our... our uh, a rudder box and we have our tiller and our tiller extension. We have to put a universal joint in here. We have to make some way that this can go up and down and over and back like this. So I'm going to go into the workshop now and I'm going to show you what we're going to make our own. Also while you're waiting for the paint to dry you can you get your yard and everything ready get your dimensions ready I I put the sail I've done a little bit of tying on it but uh, the top of the mast of course we're going to have a dead eye on the top of the mast uh, uh, we will probably put a pulley on it I don't know uh, you don't have to you can use a dead eye but for pulling up the hail yards pulley sometimes a little bit hard so we drill that 5 8 inch hole and we fill it with epoxy and then we're going to put in a, in a bolt through it with an eye on the end of it which I'm waiting to come which I think I will have tomorrow and then we will we the same with the yards and all this and and the boom will need two holes on each end well at least two on one end uh, that's for the out hole we'll show you that in the next episode so we will go and we will make the universal joint inside in the inside in the workshop now to put the tiller on here it has to be able to go this way and the tiller extension I should say this way this way and this way and this way right uh, uh, you might think a universal joint now I, I have some universal joints there for for model kits and that the problem with a, un uh, a standard un uh, you see a universal joint, uh, as you would know it, like on the back of a tractor or something like that. The problem with them is the latitude that they can only go to. They will bind. They will bind if they get over a certain point, like there, so they won't work. They're grand for. They're great for. Uh, okay for a drive shaft, when there's only a slight angle on it. But when we have this one and we're going up and down here, it's just not going to work. The second option would be uh, two of them. Even if you put two, you could put two of them, but you're complicating things then. So you could always put a, a bungee between a hole here and a hole here and a bungee a cord in between them and tie a knot on the end. Some people do that. I think it's, it, it works. It seems to work fine. And, uh, but I want to try something different anyway. So I want to make up... Uh, I want to make up... Uh, I want to make up a universal joint. So what I am going to do is I'm going to get a piece of stainless steel and I'm going to wrap it around this here but leave some sticking out and I'm going to make a pivot here on each of this when this is folded around. So this one will be pivoting on this and then the center of this will have a hole and it will be bolted down through here and this will be able to go in this axis, the yaw of the boat, or you could say the yaw, and the, the, this is the attitude. attitude, attitude. So uh, uh, we will put this down here like this, strap this up, and this one will go up, and it will go right back again, and it will go here. We will have washer. Now, what I wanted to do was I wanted to put tubing into it in, rather than uh, just putting it in. I wouldn't put it into the bare wood anyway. I would have made uh, epoxy, uh, bushing but I'm thinking of making a bushing from some tubing I don't have I have some here that's good eight millimeters inside it's brass it's brass and uh, probably doesn't wear as well it, it won't uh, it won't react with stainless steel brass doesn't react with stainless steel uh, it doesn't act as a cathode or catalyst what do you call it and anyway brass and stainless steel are fine together the same as bronze uh, not like aluminium or aluminium. Aluminium and stainless steel keep them away from one another. They will start, the charges will be going from one to the other and they will corrode, that's why. Okay, so I couldn't get some 6mm tube, uh, like 4mm and 8mm and I don't want either of them. So I'm doing it differently. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put a washer in here. I have made I've, I've this one ready for doing. I'll show you up close. I have made a little recess and then a hole which is narrower than this. So this one will fit in there. 
like that. And what we will do is we will pour the epoxy into, what we will do is we will pour the epoxy in, I will show you. I will use the masking tape, get it in the center there. The hole I have here is almost the same, but I want a little gap, a little gap between this and the wood so that the washer will stick to it. So when I put this onto here, it will stick this and it will push it down. That's the idea. And you can check on the other side, is it in the center? It is. So what I want is for the epoxy to touch the washer. But we can check that out by just pushing a pencil down like this. Make sure it's sticking on. The washer, I want the washer sticking on the, the washer to stick to the masking tape. That means there'll be a gap between the wood and the washer. I've never done this before, but <laughs> I know you're saying he's always saying that, but I didn't know. I've never done this before. It's just like uh, compromise. So then I have this here and tear this back. What we do is th because the epoxy takes a while to soak into the wood and all that, we will leave it for a while before we put this one on. Before we put the top washer on here, we will put that on near enough the end, okay? Because if I put it in there after I put this, there'll be no epoxy the other side of it because I know in my heart and soul that this will sink down. So, we will pour the epoxy in here. Uh, just to be say, careful uh, when you're doing something like this, I'm going to put a clamp on it in case I hit off it myself. And I'm just going to pour, I mixed up too much. It's very hard to mix up a small amount of this and get it accurate, so I'm going to pour it in here. The whole... The hole we made is 8 millimeters, right? The wider hole, and the other one is about 11, uh, 12, 11 or 12 millimeters, the outer part of the, of the washer. Just leave, we leave that then for a few minutes, and then we will, we will put this washer in the very thing. When it's half dry, we'll push this washer down in there. And then, when it's dry, we just drill a hole, 6 millimeter hole, through the center of the washer on both sides, and the washer will act as the bush rather than the epoxy. The, the epoxy might be touching off it, but it's, it's going to, the, the washer is going to be my bushing. Yeah, that came out fine. We poured the stuff in and uh, the washer is sunk in there. So now we're going to, uh, we're going to drill through the epoxy with six mm, so uh, six millimeters. And uh, we will drill from both sides to make sure we, go, we get it right. And then the bolt will be able to go through that. Uh, it might be a little bit tight at first, but I presume it will loosen down then after that. Now, whoa. Now we're stuck. Let's push it down. So there we have our hole through there and our bolt should be able to go through that. We just check. Like that. Okay. And we'll go both sides again as well, why not? It's fine, the washer will take you into place where you need to go. I'll go in the other side as well. Right through, looks perfect. That's fine. So we'll fit that to the boat now and see how it works. Well, I'm gonna fit this now and see. I didn't fit it yet now, though. This is m like live, okay? So, so we will. Uh, I put wider washers on the inside. I'm short one washer, but bit of persuasion there, and I got it in. So we will put a lock nut on the end of uh, of. Uh, we'll get a lock nut for them. Don't have it now in stainless steel, so. So this might be a little bit stiff in the beginning, not really. And then we'll, we'll put this down in through here, we'll put a washer. And so this works like this, like this. What am I hitting off there? So you're in and you're both.
So, yeah, I'm happy with that. That's not binding. Uh, we need a, a, big, a bigger washer there, maybe two washers there, that's all, because it's touching off. Well, that's the epoxy there. Uh, see, it's a bit loose there, so we just need another washer there. And uh, yeah, that's good. Over the whole way, full pull, up and down. Yeah, sideways, and you want to hold it. You're holding the, the rudder in one position. So that's that done. Now, next job is to figure out how to, how to hold this uh, rudder down when we're sailing and up when we're, not, when we're coming in. We've made an alteration to the case for our, uh, for our rudder so that we can retract the rudder. Uh, I will show you in a minute when we put it out onto the boat. Uh, first, firstly, we, I've made a hole here. In, I've made a hole here and I have filled this hole. I've made a hole and I'm filled it with epoxy. I'm going to make the hole again. We're going to tie a rope there. I extended this out a little bit so that it will be easier to pull. We are putting this in here. I am putting in uh, the block in there. And we will pull it and we will tie it here. So we will retract it. It will be held down by bungee. Uh, so if we hit something with this, we're going along, it's been held by bungee. I'll show you on the boat in a few minutes. It will hit it back like this, but it won't fire it up the whole way. It'll hit it back and it'll give us a warning. I just need to put more, uh, I need to put some uh, polyurethane on these. I made a little notch here on this for the bungee so that the bungee, bungee don't slip up here. Just a tiny little notch. And uh, we will put it on the boat. I'll give it a coat of polyurethane. This is held in with one screw, and uh, one four millimeter screw, and the rope will be tied to. Through this hole, I will put what's called a bow tie knot, uh, with, if I'm able to do one. I, I, I am able to do one. I made up this, uh, I made up the pulley here like this, as I showed you. Uh, we'll trim this off later and make it good and see does it work and from inside in the boat I'm not inside in the boat but we'll pull it up like this and we tie it around the cleat we tighten up the cleat like that uh, yeah that's fine uh, if we pull it, better pull it a bit tighter when we're inside in it uh, when we're coming into shore then and we can have this over here like this if you like this is uh, the universal joint is very good uh, happy with that now but over to one side uh, yeah so I'm waiting for a few parts for the sail I have the, the I put the sail up already here I'll show you a picture of it no don't so here. Uh, thank you very much for uh, watching uh, this uh, video the short shortish video the boat is now finished uh, just uh, some of the rigging to be done uh, as you see in the, p the picture I showed you earlier the rigging we already set it up we will need a 3 to 1 or 4 to 1 purchase uh, to bring down the downhaul uh, I will explain that in the next video so thank you very much for watching again and uh, if you like my video or any of my videos uh, please c please consider subscribing to uh, this uh, small channel <coughs>